Do you notice that? It's it started not like for me. I, it was a six. It was a six on mine. It was a thirty-five on mine. What the heck? I, uh, it's not the worst thing ever. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Double D podcast. Shut the fuck up, that. David. Okay. Hello, everybody. I am the only host <laughs> for today. This other person you heard moaning in the background is going to be silent for the next hour and a half. I'm Dennis's and- girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <Yes. laughs> I like touching Dennis's pee pee. It's my favorite pee pee yeah, out of does. all the pee pees. But, uh, anyways, guys, uh, today we're going to shut the fuck up, Dave. Today, uh, we're going to be... I thought I was Korean. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out I'm not fucking Korean. Today, guys, we uh, it's going to be a um, bit of a low-key one, if anything. Yeah. Uh, uh, especially since um, uh, for for us, um, I'm not exactly a uh, comedian comedian, but I appreciate um, all my favorite comedians that like I basically grew up with and found new ones. Um, we're going to be talking about Norm Macdonald later, but today he actually, I mean, as of this, um, day that we're recording, obviously not when this is, uh, basically uploaded, uh, Norm Macdonald has passed away. Uh, he is not with us. Pigeon has flown. That's Mike fucking Tyson. (laughs) (laughs) Why do you want to stay in the bed with me? Cause you're so small, you're like a stuffed animal. I got the whole bed to myself. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> I saw that scene today. As of we are recording uh, this on the Tuesday that he passed, mm-hmm. and yes, I got a beer over there that I'm gonna pour out for him. Uh, it's probably spunked and expired, which he would probably find a lot of joy in me pouring out an expired beer for him. And probably make fun of you. That's what I'm saying. He'd 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 legit (laughs) probably think it's funny, if I'm being honest, if you knew, if you knew about the man and his humor. (laughs) So, yeah, God bless Definitely one of the greats. Yeah, one of the greats who definitely passed and, uh, we're gonna miss him. But, uh, today, uh, at least, I don't know, I guess today's topics are gonna be kind of driven by me just because... Uh, some shit that's been on my mind for a long time, and uh, something that I even talked about with my girlfriend, not you, David. Uh, can, we I, qu- can we quickly mention how we actually have topics today? You remember last week? <laughs> when we both just came in? <laughs> it was just, like, David, I'm gonna be fucking honest with you, man. I don't got shit. <laughs> and I'm like, Dennis, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> we found something. So, now we have like three things prepared. Yeah. Going into this one, all of a sudden, it's just—it's just funny how podcasts work, especially ours. It's named after titties. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, today, I don't know. Like, it's something that we brought up before, but something I guess like I was—I um, watched a video before um, uh, off of a YouTube channel called uh, Lewis Rossman. I don't know if I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys may have heard of him. If anything, he's basically a uh, Apple. Um, macbook repairman who has his own youtube channel that kind of blew up over um the course of a couple years uh, i think especially during the pandemic um he's a big advocate for right to repair uh he also just um a lot of times during his channel it's not even just about like macbook repair it's just a lot of it is also just topics that he just feels as if like he just wants to talk about and it ranges from like politics and he lives in new york so a lot of stuff that has to do with new york um among other things and one thing that he well uh one thing that he uh mentioned uh in a video that i was watching recently was that um a lot of young men uh this is off of an article off of uh wall street journal and if you guys don't have to deal with the paywall you know good for you (laughs) but uh for all of us who do and fuck uh basically yeah fuck wall street journal and tbh all about fuck. spreading unbiased information to the people <laughs> fuck in Give general what most they need for a news <laughs> newspaper companies who force you to basically drop a subscription just to read the the fucking article like yeah. that shit still bothers me to this day i still people remember used to pay for hmm? newspapers man i mean uh, i yeah yeah i which i mean you know if that is like just them kind of, I, I suppose, uh, following where the new this new digital age is going, like because newspapers are, fact of the matter is they're fairly outdated. Like, yeah, they're like they mostly 
are used as bedspread for homeless people more than actual reading material nowadays, which I mean is kind of unfortunate, but it, you know, it is what it is. And what a nice cereal box. <laughs> What a nice UPS box. That'll make a great ha- um, I'm sorry. I can't, I don't, I don't, I'm not I'm what not a trying nice to serial killer. I'm not I'm not <laughs> I'm not out here trying to make fun of uh homeless right now. No, but, no, um, not not yet. Not yet, not yet. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. We're yeah, there. Probably later. Episode, episode we'll 1 no- ep- Episode 100 we're going to do a global nationwide roast of homeless people. You know how like it, a lot of those like nice. top rich YouTubers like will just go up to homeless people, give them like 500 or 5000 dollars and then just film their reactions so they can get clicks on their YouTube channel. Well, yeah. we're going to do that too, except instead of giving them 5000 dollars, it's going to be me dressed up as a homeless man. Yeah, and I'm going to pee on Dennis. Yeah, he's going to pee on me and then I'm going to cut his dick off. Yeah. Not not actually. For the grank. Wink, wink, but uh, <laughs> but I yeah. But so the article is essentially talking about um how a lot of young men. It, it specifically said young men, but I think this could even go across the board and basically even um add in young women as well. Uh, that a lot of them kind of are seeing college as a bit of a waste of time. Um, in this current kind of I guess decade. Uh. And as obviously me and David, we are two college graduates. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I don't think anyone. Uh, <laughs> I don't think anyone uh, is. I feel as if uh, kind of a first for over here. But uh, no, no, I don't think nobody is more better equipped than me and David to talk about how. I think, at least for me, uh, David, I'll let you go on uh, next after I just say this bit. Like personally, for me. I, uh, just to start off the topic, I guess, like, I truly feel, um, especially in this current uh, generation, and I guess even so, like, uh, past couple years, of uh, college degrees, and specifically speaking, bachelor degrees, I feel as if have become so fucking worthless um, nowadays. And I, and I want to say at least um, just uh, add, just to add on to that, college bachelor degrees are are worthless, and I know it's a harsh word to say, but they're worthless because I almost feel since almost everyone and their mothers are going to college now, I almost feel as if the importance of a degree is almost diluted and at the same time mm. almost made fucking pointless. And what's well, everyone super? Eh, nobody will. No be. one will be. And going off of that quote, and it's true because I have a um, I have a cousin who um, when he came back uh, from his service uh, in the Middle East because he was in the Marines, he came back and um, he uh, went to Bergen. He got his associates in finance and he didn't even bother to go into, let's say, uh, a four year school or whatever, because he had already managed to land himself a job within a financing uh, company. And he had already had and this is the key word here. He had prior experience um, with a store that his mom, my aunt, was basically the head of and he was basically working the books and he. I'm pretty sure it was because of that that he got the job that he did. Um, he's not working at his at that company anymore. He's moved up since then. But like you know, he's he even told me, um, and this shit stuck with me a lot. And I think it's something that um, if like if if this platform had like hundreds and millions of people, like I would be saying this often and loudly. Like college degrees don't ensure jack shit. No matter even if you come from even ivy leagues because often and nowadays and i think i even mentioned this once um when uh, remy and dane was here that most of the time when people especially recruiters or hrs are looking at uh, potential let's say employees um uh, for any sort of position they're always looking for people who have had prior experience more than whatever fuck degree or whatever uh, college you graduated from now i mean I'm not saying that if I was a recruiter, I wouldn't go like, oh, wow, Harvard. But it's like, you know, (laughs) oftentimes, like, uh, the one thing um, that a lot of, I would say, companies and uh, recruiters 
are looking not to do is to train your ass. And I know that is like kind of, you know, well, what the fuck? Like, you know, like the like a lot of positions even say like entry level, no experience needed. But it's like that's a lie most of the time in which to like, you know, they're looking for they're looking at least to see that we won't have to hold your hand when we basically give you the offer. And when you come in for your first day, like they're not looking to train anybody nowadays, especially for, let's say, semi or highly professional sort of like thing roles, like especially like, you know, I mean, if you're like a finance kind of guy and you're going to be working the books and anything even uh, closely related to that, obviously, you're going to have to know what you're doing. But um, even going off of, let's say, going back to college real quick. And just even talking about how, like, these, the whole landscape now, I think, is definitely changed. Um, not enough for me to go, like, you know, I guess that it's enough. Because college, it's almost insane how, like, the cost of college has gotten more expensive every fucking year. Almost every college that I've been to, at least... Bergen Community, which is obviously a community college, and Montclair, which is a four-year state uh, university. Um, I'm not counting Brooklyn because I was only there for one semester, <laughs> so I don't really know. <laughs> but uh, at least for Bergen and Montclair. Um, and those are not exactly whatever prestigious schools. They're schools, whatever. Um, they Their tuitions have gotten up, have increased more and more every single fucking year and bergen used to be and you know this is gonna sound real boomer of me because like in those days are over uh for bergen bergen used to be two something thousand for a semester two something like two thousand like let's say like on average or estimating like thing you know um two thousand dollars nowadays it's up to 3.5 to four <sighs> and it's steadily getting to I don't know. It, it may be one day where it's just like, it's just eventually going to get to the same sort of tuition cost that even like state schools like have. Doesn't but, make any sense. Man. And, and the thing is too, like, you know, I know some people um, uh, would argue that, well, I mean, uh, and guys, this is, we're going to be strictly talking about, I guess, um, at least this bit that I'm saying is going to be a bit about like Bergen and I guess a little Montclair. But I think any of you guys who let's say are out of the New Jersey area, it, if, if there are any of you guys out there that, you know, um, have gone to college or know someone who's going to go into college, have a sibling who's going to go into college or somebody, whoever, um, you kind of would, like, if you guys ever looked back at your school's tuition costs now from back then and compared the two, chances are, I'd say nine times out of ten, they're probably more expensive than they were before. And again, going back to uh, Bergen, and we're just going to strictly talk about it as a community college. And David had also gone to Bergen, uh, I guess, around the same time, almost as I did. I think you were came, you came the year, the last semester that I left, I believe. And I believe I saw you maybe a couple times. But at um, Bergen, that was that's the before time, man. If yeah, I, I can't think of a single time where I saw you at Bergen, though that probably happened. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. That's, that's it, it was a long time ago. Yeah. Ancient history now at this point. But um, uh -huh. it was just like, you know, Bergen's fucking affordable tuition. Because that's the one thing that I remember so many people uh, telling me. And I'm pretty sure people still say it now about Bergen that like, you know, oh, it's like so much more affordable. And it saves you so much money from going to a four-year school. Uh, like, because going to a four-year school, obviously, is going to be more expensive per semester. And a lot of times... You know, everyone kind of knows how college works. Uh, you, we're talking about, like, you know, gen eds. Um, that classes that you really couldn't give less of a fuck about. But they force you to take it anyways because, like, you know, oh, we need your money. I had to take um, Success 101 at Bergen. Whatever the fuck that It was means, a right? new class that they installed in the middle of my time there for, uh, for just a gen ed degree. While I was in the middle of going there, they just suddenly decided that was a requirement. Probably the most worthless college class I've ever taken in my life. I could I could believe that. I believe yeah. my little brother he actually took that class before. You're gonna, you gonna have this community and college uh, community college teacher. He's, uh, she's gonna stand here and teach me how to be successful. Well, bitch, like thing. Why don't you just you, you make us millionaires? Her, yeah, <laughs> why didn't you? It was your fucking Ferrari. Where is it? You drive that here? She actually has a Ferrari. It's like, oh god damn! And <laughs> now we see where her bank her bank account went, but and, she but she also lives in it. Probably, maybe. 
But I mean, you know, if I lived in a Ferrari, I'd probably get robbed like the very night of that. <laughs> that first yeah. night that I would sleep in it, and yeah. but going back real quick about even uh, Bergen, I think even, and if you guys ha- live anywhere else, and you you guys also went to community college beforehand, like they, they're everywhere. So like, and I'm sure like some of you have had experiences, but um, uh, going back to let's say community colleges, and even uh, we're gonna talk about let's say um state schools afterwards. I I I really am so concerned now, because. I have a very strong distaste for the general education system within the United States. And I think it is the most, like, it's the thing that really needs some good unfucking, but it is so, it has been so fucked Bro, and corrupted. the is dry inside of yeah. that fucking, inside of that fucking post. An at asshole, this yeah. Point. Actually, it's, it's not even, ass, it's, not, it's an asshole, you're it's right. It's an asshole, though. That's Run by thing, assholes. All, all it does is just regurgitate shit, and regurgitate shit as in, um, it's... That's a rusty venture. Oh, <laughs> uh, like, the, the one thing about, uh, I guess, schools Sorry. that I almost feel as if it's like, what they're doing nowadays is just kind of regurgitating shit is because, is that... Education for the last 20 years hasn't really fucking changed. It hasn't really improved. I don't really think there is anything to improve. I'll even like kind of argue that as well. But at the same time, though, it's like if that is the case, right? Why in the fuck is um, not only tuition costs uh, getting even exponentially higher, but also like and this uh, this is something that's been going on that I've uh, that I remember seeing a lot when I was a kid, but now I kind of realize like what it actually was. I think everything in our early lives has almost been artifactually manufactured to make us want to go to college. And I'm speaking through that, uh, through the media, because I remember seeing so many times like people... Like, college, every fucking movie that would had to do about a young guy in high school or wherever the fuck always like then kind of like talked up college it's like you know like oh it's like you know this new adventure and all that like they kind of romanticize it in a bit and i think that's the one thing that i really hate about like college nowadays is about how it romanticized it is because i mean because i'll i will say this high school is arguably compared to college and i'm uh and I'm gonna I'm preface this by saying that like I know that college like, you could have fun all you want like yeah you like you're gonna party and like have fun with your friends and all that like you know I, I did that too like we we all did that but my thing is is that high school was practically practically depending on where you live and what school you went to is free they didn't cost me shit like it cost your family some tax dollars but that's just the way of things how it goes yeah like high school didn't cost me shit college cost me my life <laughs> so it being a necessary thing is like not something that necessarily makes any sense is what you're saying what be that being uh college being yeah. like you see i mean you're i know you're saying that you feel like the general value of a degree and the general value of something like a bachelor's degree especially is going down but what you're saying is because college is technically a private thing that you would have to pay money out of your own pocket to even really go to so it would be ridiculous for like you know something like that to necessarily be a requirement for at least like an average job. Like I'm looking at some of these ones yes. that I sent over to you, yes. and you feel like the general value of that is going down as it goes on because once everyone's super, that no one will be, and that it's not going to matter once everybody has that kind of stuff anyway. Not that that would even happen because of inflation, because of college just inflating their prices over the years and how ridiculously, ludicrously, fucking criminally expensive it is to go to college in the USA. So that and also adding on that we have also been almost brainwashed into thinking like culturally speaking, like, have you ever heard of a, let's say, typical suburban fucking white family telling their kid, oh, you don't got to go to college. Typically, almost never happens. And it's the same for everyone else that comes to this country. It's the same fucking talk that I hear almost nine times out of ten. A lot of people, at least, um... Not enough, but a lot of people have started to kind of grown out of that. But all these parents, they always tell the kids, oh, you got to go to college. You're a failure if you don't go to college. 
of, you know, I'm gonna look bad at the dinner table among my other friends and plus my family if you don't go to college. And I'd almost, I, I hope they keep doing, like, I don't know, it's a double-edged sword, but I would imagine that eventually parents will figure out that college has gotten so fucking ridiculously expensive to the point where it's like, well, fuck, I, no. <laughs> Dude, even the textbooks aren't, like, worth, you, yeah. you know textbooks are not, like, worth what they're actually sold in those stores, right? Dude, my you want to know why they are paper. that expensive. They're, the reason they are that expensive mm. is because literally they just, they, they tell their teachers that they need to be able to afford, you know, fucking, uh, Audis. Like oh, they, well, yeah, the, whatever the fuck The prices of those yeah. things are literally inflated just so they can give their fucking workers what they think they're due without them being the ones having to pay it. That is why college textbooks are as expensive as they are, and why everybody needs an outside source like fucking... What was the one we all used in college? Uh, I used Facebook checked, Marketplace. Uh, checked. Checked, was it called? Not Facebook Marketplace. What? It, I used it for year... Uh, uh, Chegg. Chegg, that's Chegg, the one. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I used Chegg, and if I didn't... Like, I swear to God, like, some textbooks were, like, fucking $500. Yeah. You would get financially fucked. And then guess what? You could buy it on there, or better, better mm -hmm. yet, most of the time, rent it for something like 20 It's like... Mm -hmm. College, it, it's... And the, here's the such thing... such a loaded fucking... It, yeah, of bullshit. And I, I'm even... Uh, and this is just also another uh, thing... Another thing that is a part of, like, my whole hatred against, like, the education, education system in this country. That... I'm not saying, like... Uh, actually, maybe I kind of am. But, like, um, this country's education system is has been engineered to almost be, be like hey if you don't want to be like it's just basically capitalism too like you know if you don't give us money to get this degree you're a failure but also if you get this degree it doesn't guarantee shit and i'm not and here's the thing though too back in the day bachelor degrees I don't, I, I'm not too keen on, let's say, this era, but I'd imagine back in the day, like, college wasn't exactly a fucking, like, you know, place that every, yacht, every like, old uh, Joe can just go to. No. Because it, being college educated, like, not that I'm saying it meant something, but at the very least, if someone heard that you were college educated back in those days, it was almost something to be like, yeah, like, to almost... Nowadays, of. the higher up the Ivy League school, you might get accepted just for being black because that makes them look <laughs> good. And they want a diversity pick and they don't care about your actual qualifications as far yeah. as getting into those places. Now, all the politics within those schools, too, like all the shit that they the do higher also up, bothers me. Higher yeah. up the Ivy League school is, the higher up the school is, the more politically driven their fucking uh, decisions are of who or they quotas. accept and like, who they like, get in. It does not matter how hard you... The, 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 what is it their diversity uh, who, who's that yeah. fucking woman from full house that like you know lied or whatever to get her kid into like harvard or some shit uh, oh fuck I, that whole scandal right that, that whole was going scandal on? yeah where yeah. like harvard like was like they accepted like side cash or whatever just to like have her yeah. in and some shit it's like dude it's it's criminal and it's not mm -hmm. it shouldn't be treated as a necessary thing i mean i think some jobs do need certain levels of education and whatnot but it's just disgusting how perverse it's became because what college is supposed to be, and last year especially, this pissed me the hell off. Mm -hmm. uh, I um, what college is supposed to be is that at least for me it was. It's supposed to be this breeding ground to discover what you love. When I first was going to college, I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do. My my biggest thing when I was eighteen year old when I was eighteen years old was making really shitty rip off Team Fortress two videos, and <laughs> I think I based my decision no shit to become a communication and media arts major because they had a class on going viral. Which I never even got to take because it wasn't part of that specific sect of my degree. So, sometimes you start college to do one thing and you exit out doing something completely different. And that's part of what I feel like it should be for. I fell in love with screenwriting at college. You know, it's sort of what taught me that I wanted to give that world back the same love that it gave me. Uh, I'm on Fiverr, by the way. Uh, check out, uh, listen to my demo reels on there. It's uh, all in the description below. And uh, be sure to favorite my profile if for all your future uh, gigs if you need a deep and resonant voice narrator. But... Yes, please, check out, dude. Uh, yeah, nowadays, it's like you shouldn't have to pay that much for that kind of experience. 
on one end, it's like for something like a doctor or whatever, like, yeah, you need an MD or whatever, blah, blah, blah. You need to get your, uh, your PhD to do this kind of stuff. That's different. But for certain jobs requiring a bachelor's degree when they really fucking shouldn't. Or don't. Like, I, you don't need it. <laughs> these might be some sort of extreme examples that I'm looking for, but, like, I sent Dennis this, like, little page from Bored Panda or whatever. Yeah, uh, I'm like looking at it. Like, examples. hardworking, honest, friendly, motivated, experience acquired. Yes, uh, it says 28 <laughs> examples of hilariously... Uh, of Doctor, hilariously doctoral unreal. degree preferred. <laughs> yeah, it's like 28 examples of hilariously unrealistic expectations when applying for a job. And some of it... I'm, I'm going to read this one for Wells Fargo here. BSBA degree or seven plus years of business systems, seven plus years of capital markets experience. These are all the required qualifications, by the way. One plus year of Autosys, two plus years of Linux, three plus years of Agile, three plus years of Jira, five plus years of Pac-2000 experience, five plus years of relational database experience, five plus years of experience capturing and documenting complex business and functional requirements, three plus years of experience in the capital markets and investment banking industry, five plus years of business systems analyst or design experience. Entry level job. There was this one it's other an one that entry <laughs> level job. There's and this it one other requires one requires <laughs> all of that. There's this one other one that says others good looking. <laughs> that's just, that's just fucked right up. That's just fucked right up. That can't be legal. I saw that one. I saw that one in there. Like literally, like tell me, like you're gonna, like tell me oh that you're going God. to sexually harass me without telling me you're gonna sexually harass me. That is literally what that is. Oh, here we go. Medical writer, entry level, requirements. You need a life sciences PhD, PharmD, and an MD. For an entry level job. Like, what the, I mean, most of the stuff that I'm seeing here is for stuff like engineers and programming it's ridiculous. jobs and stuff like, like that. We're not stuff that already market. requires yeah. insane education. But this stuff is for, like, entry-level jobs. And, and, guys, we're not saying that this is, like, the norm right now. Like, you know, this is just, like, I, I'm pretty sure these guys, whoever posted these job postings... This one make... requires 12-plus years of experience in a program that was only out for six years! Entry-level. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Guys, all, not, okay. not to mention all those like women, not to mention all those women who came out against Google when that shit came out. There was this one I don't even remember what her name was, and I feel bad because I feel like I should have. But she went on this whole Twitter thing about how like Google apparently like they're the fucking devil, from what I hear when it comes to working for them. Like as far as like you know benefits and like what they're doing. Apparently they stole like some of her fucking research and fired her or some shit. It's fucking hey. Yeah, it's like. And this is what we have to, like, you know, like, spend our entire, like, life savings are to, like, fucking work towards just so we can, like, give back to the system for that. Why the fuck do you think, and talking about, you know, like, more women going to college now instead of men, why do you think so many of them are just going to trade schools instead? It's such, it's the stigma, my friends. Everybody says that that is so looked down upon. Like, no, give yourself a chance, go to college, get that degree, and see what, like, like life has to yes, offer Yes, and then you. also be 106k in debt. After you're fucking done. Not even that. It's it, There's that. And, like, I remember reading the story on Reddit of this one person who said the worst advice they ever got was, like, from their parents or from an advisor or something who told them, don't go to this trade school and go to college instead. And he dropped out of this. No, uh, no it wasn't the trade school. He was, like, in a, working in a factory job, and he was moving his way up through the factory. Mm -hmm. And apparently he was completely content with that. He wasn't the best student growing up or anything. And this was, like, a good, healthy uh, Dude, so occupation for him. Dude, so then stay at that factory. No, he was convinced not to do it. He was convinced to go back to school where he Good. dropped out and you know where he dropped out in like a couple of weeks because it just wasn't for him and now the dude has crippling debt because of it and the job that was filled that he was going for at that fucking factory job got filled up it's not for everyone no, college is I, also it, yeah. not for everyone it, and that guy everyone. got completely fucked over and by it people's also idea of success in this country is that not only are you college educated but yeah, also, why is not there a that, stigma? And not not that you're rich, but like, oh, you got like you're making money, and because like I don't know, like I don't think it's everyone's dream to be like a fucking t two billionaire or whatever uh, type of person. It's just kind of like, oh, I just want stability in my life. And for me, it's like you know, that's the same for me. It's like I just want a job where like I I won't hate myself. If I don't know, I, I guess that's not. I guess that's a bit asking too much nowadays. But it's like. <laughs> That's my I just want to. Like, I love my day job. I know, but it's like you know that like it's it takes time to find that though for some people. Oh, but yeah. like, I, I'm just saying though for me, it's like I just want a job that like I could like you know help pay my car, my house, and you know other shit, and basically not have to fucking worry about money as if it's like a a storm cloud of doom over my head. And the problem is, is that also like you know, it's 
it's this country, man. Like, it's, like, people have been just so, like, capitalismified and shit, like, to the point where, like, you <laughs> Capitalize know, me, Cap'n. <laughs> Like I'm sure, like again, like I'm 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 also a capitalist too, but it's like you know I, I just want I for me I, I want money that I could be comfortable with. College costs a fraction, yeah. a fraction of what it costs here in Europe. Yeah, Over some there, of the some like, of it's even just state funded. Yep. Like which I mean, you know, people would argue like, well, I mean, you know, this is the greatest education out there. I'm like. There's still places out there. Literally, in just a different way of paying for it, man. It's not gonna fucking screw <laughs> I, everything over. I, I'm or sure, some shit. like, I'm sure places like Oxford and a lot of prestigious schools. They're like at Harvard level, and if anything, I think Harvard isn't exactly the most prestigious university out there, like in the world, like obviously. But um, there's places that are even older than Harvard, and that goes without saying. Like Oxford, like they're older than fucking Harvard, and the thing with um. Uh, I guess some places like that. I'm sure you still have to pay. It's still very much like an elite 0.1% type club. Um, like for a lot of schools, especially Harvard. Like, you know, I, if you, like, if we have one of those people who are in our audience right now, who got into Harvard out of their own merit, like dude, like, the, like the girl like, I did the morning announcements with in my senior year of high school got into Harvard. Shit, good for her then. But yeah. like again, if you are those type of people, like hats off to you. But you know, for a lot of people, I mean, Harvard. I'm not saying is like wholly that sort of environment where it's just a bunch of rich pricks. There's plenty. It's full of plenty of people that are like you know who did work hard and shit like that. But I still remember um Conan, who is still one of my favorite um nighttime hosts uh for your um for uh. I guess a talk show is like what well, I was trying he to think. He was very of close with Norm McDonald too. Yeah, he's, he's, I know. He's yeah. like very much. He's heavily yeah. grieving right now. Yeah, and uh, Conan, I remember him uh, getting getting asked uh, on air by Bill Burr, like you know if like you know if Harvard you think was any more different or challenging than any other school, and he kind of like said no, not really, in the sense that like it. Um, it was about the same sort of workflow at any other university. I don't like. I think cram is something that every university student, no matter who the fuck you are, is gonna go through. I mean, if you're a med student, then yo, that cram is gonna be even ten times worse. I I think compared to anything else, just because med school med uh, med programs, like especially getting an MD at anything or even just even being a doctor in general, like it's yeah. it's just ridiculous how much like shit you have to basically pour into and and. Um, I still remember my friend who's a, who's a, who's a nurse. She just became a nurse practitioner now, so congratulations to her. Uh, if you ever watch this, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, I, th I think um, I remember what's her doodle. Yeah, uh, and she, uh, she told me a lot of time, like the the hospital that she works at. Um, she talks to a lot of the doctors because like she has a night shift, so like kind of like she's kind of able to like kind of converse with a lot of her coworkers and stuff, and. Um, mm -hmm. She told me how a lot of doctors, like, they're still in debt. <laughs> and doctors, on average, usually make more money than most other jobs out there. And to be fair, they earn it. Because, you know, you, you fucking literally went through eight years of hell. If not, maybe even more. To get that uh, license to practice medicine. Like, I, I feel as if that whole salary is deserved. Whatever. But I think at the same time, though, like, you know, I'm not saying that we should have sympathy for... For a lot of people just because of their choices and shit. But she told me that a lot of these doctors are still in six-figure debt. And they've been at the job for a good amount of years. Like, these guys have been there for basically double-digit years now. And they're still in debt to pay off their fucking student loans. And, again, it's also medicine. And, uh, like, there is no job out there that is more engineered to guarantee you a job than being a doctor because being a doctor i would even say has been so capitalismified uh in this country that like you know it's like you want to get a lot of money become a doctor <laughs> like you know 
But also, we're not going to tell you about the three hundred thousand dollars of debt you're going to be dealing with for the rest of your fucking life. <laughs> it's a wage. And, it's a wage gap capitalistic thing. Not getting anything else, my friend. I'm looking up this one right here. Mm. This uh, this New York Times piece right here is all about this teenage girl who didn't really play soccer, who became this star soccer recruit at Yale, because her parents literally like paid over a million dollars for her to go there. Not surprised. It's where the money talks. It's, you know, like, it's like, there are these college admissions. Like, this is the kind of shit that, like, among other things, like, besides the fact that it's ridiculously expensive, that just demotivates people to even do it. It's not even the fact that, mm -hmm. like, you know, the, the requirements for some jobs are outrageous. It's how insanely expensive it is to even do that to the point yeah. where you get in such debt that the job you get with it, it's hardly even going to be able to pay off the student debt as it goes on, so it's mm -hmm. not even a point. It's like, you literally go to, like, it's so existentially fucked up, because it, like, essentially mm -hmm. forces you to be stuck in one part of your life, when the whole part of that part of your life in college is to move on to the next. It's so fucked up. Yeah. It's like, it's one, of, it's one of the most fucked up things about, like, capitalism right there, which has infected, I feel like, college harder than anything else in this goddamn country. When, you know, like, this, this fucking, like, rich, like, fucking piece of shit parents can just pay like a million dollars to like get their kid in there when hell there could there there was probably a student with like better grades or some shit that they couldn't get in there because you know they don't come from the right type of family or whatever or they're not rich enough even though they can afford to get them there it's like well you're just not yale material it's like it, this these things house the most pretentious fucking greed fucking little piece of shit motherfuckers that, like, come to these places. And you want to know the best part? I'm surprised neither of us have said this the entire time. But I'm just going to say this to you right here. At this point, and I've been preaching this since, like, I fucking graduated high school. If you decide, if you, unless you have, like, a scholarship or some shit. Or if you're just, like, stupid fucking rich and you can afford to, like, go to, like, one of those places for just four years. Mm -hmm. Never just go to a university for all four years. Just don't. It, 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 you're a fucking moron if you do that. Like, just get your fucking gen ed, like, studies, like, all your general requirements, like, your maths, at a your community English college. and stuff. Get that done at a community college. It is literally the exact same motherfucking education for an astronomical, cosmic, less, cosmically sized, less cost than it would at a yeah. fucking four-year school. And that's not even what you're studying to get there in the first place. You're literally just paying more for the exact same education if you go there for all four years. Oh, but I want that experience. Okay, what about last year? <laughs> when you still had to pay full tuition to not go to college. Tuitions didn't change. It, they're, when, just getting, well, they're just getting Tuitions bigger. didn't change when college students had no mm -hmm. choice but to do everything from home. Mm -hmm. Why do you suppose that is? Hmm? It's almost like that money isn't going there for the right reasons when you think yeah. about that. Not to mention, too, like, I remember, um, uh, God, Montclair's... I do not uh, fucking envy those kids. I feel so <laughs> fucking unbelievably bad for people who are still in college. Or people still, who were in college last year, especially. I still feel bad for all the seniors in high school that are going to be going into college. Or at the very least, like, you know, it's like their parents and the teachers that are telling them, hey, you gotta go to college and shit. Like David, I'm a like I'ma say this like right now, like just because of like how like mentally fucked up like I think the whole manipulation that our society kind of does to kids, like think to be going into college and shit. Like Like I think I'm a I'ma always just be like very standoffish nowadays, like uh to like in the future when I'm like a parent and stuff. Like I'ma definitely be really like just kinda like you know, like fuck school and shit like that. Not really, but like I was even telling, uh, I was, as I was talking about this uh, with my girlfriend and, uh, I was mentioning how, like, don't you like feel, uh, to her, like, don't you feel as if like the whole pledge of allegiance thing is like some real low key, like dictator type shit. Like, yeah. like, uh, like I remember so many times, like she was even mentioning like, you know, like we were told to stand up as if we were like military recruits and shit, like stand up for the pledge of allegiance. And and sing the Pledge of Allegiance. And I got, like, some real, like, like, pre, like, 1930s, like, type of Germany vibes. Where, like, I was always, now that I'm thinking about it, going back, like, saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Like, it's such, like, really disgusting, like, 1984 type shit. And I still remember there was this one time when, like, I, I had a, such a bad morning, right? Yeah. I came into class and it was homeroom, right? And everyone was like, uh, talking to da, da, da. loudspeaker comes on. 
Everyone, please rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. And like, Take a I, I was in a I, I was in a bad enough mood that I just like basically loudly mumbled the fucking pledge, and I got reprimanded for that. Uh, I I don't think I, I I was sent to the principal's office and shit, but like before that, my teacher pulled me to the side and like asked me like you know like not like you know like if I I always said if I was a teacher like I would like always try to kind of like be the best teacher that I could. Like I know there's a lot of teachers that really don't give a fuck like after like a certain amount of years pass. But like teacher being a teacher is be- is one of those positions in life where like you got to have some empathy in you. Like cuz you're just going to produce even more shit. Like <laughs> that's just or at least these kids are going to turn into pieces of shit like later on down in life. And I'm not saying that's also no fault of their own either, but like teachers like they are not exactly role models but like they're kind of like people who guide you in a, in a sort of way or at least that's how they're supposed to be I, I guess if any of you of y'all out there are teachers and like you know you go you are good teachers then this doesn't apply to you but this teacher fucking told me like you know you don't like as if i'm a fucking child too like and i'm not saying like oh i'm 17 i'm an adult no i'm not saying that but it's just like like, she was talking to me as if, like, she was chastising a fucking five-year-old. And, like, why does the pledge even fucking matter so much? I, I mean, like, and I mean this seriously. Like, I kind of, like, thought it weird. Like, especially when a lot of those football players back in those days, like, basically took the knee during the national anthem. And I I truly feel that whoever fucking made that song was probably a slave owner. Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Francis Scott Key, who was the guy who made it. And he basically made it um, after, I think, uh, it was during the War of 1812. And, like, there was a battle that he was in. British were firing away and fuck, like, and he basically made this poem. And then eventually he turned it into a song. I don't know if that is a true history. Uh, sue me. I don't give a fuck. It's, like, it's that one era of history that the only thing that I liked about the War of 1812 was how the British burned down DC. And I always thought that was the funniest thing in the world because <laughs> they were talking all this good, like all this good shit, like thing right before the war and saying, yeah. we're going to take Canada. And they got clapped after they fucking got back. <laughs> they but got clapped. At, at the same time, the Americans technically did win that war because, you know, basically it ground, it grounded to a standstill eventually at one point. But I digress in that, like, I feel as if like, like, if I was, let's say, the head of education, I would undo so much shit. Like, just kind of get rid of it and trim the fat. Like, fuck the Pledge of Allegiance. If you'd, like, get up for it, and if you don't get up for it, like, it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't make you, I feel as if, any less American. Because it's like... Like, doesn't the whole fucking song just sound like some real fascist-type shit? It is. Like, it and is. it's not like... like, And the thing is, like, oh, for fascism, it's like... Whenever, like, because, uh, like, you know, we all, we kind of already imagine, like, how the Hitler youth was during, during those days. Like, you know, they pledged allegiance to Hitler, not to Germany. <laughs> they pledged allegiance to one guy. The only difference between our song and probably theirs is that ours is to the country. And the thing is, too, is that, like, it's just so, like, weirdly like fascistly fucked up how like they tell us like it's a like almost a sin to not stand for the pledge when like david i remember i went to a fucking baseball game uh with my girlfriend and uh but before the game started everyone had to stand for the pledge and i felt like you know like a fucking kid again like (laughs) you mean you mean the national anthem no it was the pledge wait what no, actually, no. Yeah, it was probably the National Anthem. But, like, you know, it's almost like, oh, if you don't stand for the National Anthem, it's like, you're an asshole. It's like, first of all, fuck that song to begin with. Like, like I, it's I also the sh- whole point of this country is that I can say that it sucks. Yeah. Not that, oh, if you do, if you don't stand up, you're like a fucking, I don't know, like, whatever the fuck people call you nowadays, a what communist, I don't know. What separates you from King George, motherfucker, yeah. for saying and- that I have to do this? Is that not the whole reason that George Washington took that shotgun to the dick? So we could just fucking <laughs> say that we don't, not everything here is great. They no, but David, like, don't you know everything here is great? No, Even our healthcare no, is great. No, everything is infallible. <laughs> no. Dude, by and large, for most people, college is a credential, not a deep intellectual experience. At this point, yeah. yeah. And I'll, I'll even just go on. Uh, I feel like on, most uh, majors aren't practical. 
I, I you know, you probably yeah. won't get a, you probably won't get a job in like literary criticism or history. Women's studies. History, <laughs> women's, yeah, but obviously women's studies. Like obviously no disrespect to no disrespect Look, to the like the like minded good feminists out there. If, yeah, and like Dennis is about to say if it's something if you If it's love, something you are interested in, like I'm not taking nothing away from you. But, but it is a useless fucking degree. It, I, that's that's another thing that I'm gonna go like kind of uh back and forth on. Because like on one hand, fuck college, but at the one hand, like, you know, it, like there are like the fact remains that there are degrees that won't guarantee you a job, but it'll definitely help, though, if anything. You know what I mean? Like, it will really help if they see this. Like, but it'll also, like, thing, that also still goes hand in hand with how much experience you got in that. Um, I don't know. If you were applying for HR positions, like, I don't know, maybe they'll be like, oh, women's studies. Huh? What do you know about women? And it's like, a guy <laughs> coming in. It's like, so what do you know about women? It's like, uh, I know they're, they're, they're uh, <laughs> reminds me of that episode of the Parks and Rec where Andy's trying to take like one college level course. He's like, I'm just going to decide it random. And he just like whips his finger around and like just stamps it to the paper. And it was fucking gender study. <laughs> Let's go, Andy. Look, look, listen, 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 listen. Honestly, if you are like interested in people in an anthropological sort of way, Let me just, maybe something like like that shit will kind of help. But I'm just saying though, if you're trying to get into the workforce, look, don't even go for that. I is what I'm saying. I discovered what I loved through college. It, it it helped me in that regard. That's what it's supposed to do. It should be affordable for you to like find this kind of place for you to just go forth and do that, which low key again community colleges, which is another reason that I think it's dumb that people put community college down. It's like that's mm-hmm. literally just that's another just stupid stigma and frankly it's a scam stigma just to get you to pay more money that you don't need to pay to a four year school just to go there for the four years. That's why those stigmas exist. It's like that's literally like a fucking conspiracy right there that like those mm-hmm. stigmas exist that like, oh, this education is worth less here. You need to do this at a four year. That's literally just to extort money out of you. It's literally. A, that is a scam. Literally. And they uh, th- 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 this is the fucked up part, okay? College Angry is not for Chinese, every- College is not for everybody. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that. I later. just I literally just saw your name on fucking Riverside. Whoa. Like Dave, this whole time the microphone was just eclipsing your side. So I literally just moved my head up like two inches and all I see is angry Chinese man. I'm like, I didn't write that. We'll, <laughs> like, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute as go, to go, why go, that go. is. Or talk about that later as to why that is. Mm-hmm. But before I lose this train of thought, it Sorry, college is not for everybody. That's, yes. that's completely okay. I hated college for the most part, but I don't regret doing it because it helped me discover what I loved, and I am proud of the degree, and I'm very grateful and blessed that my parents had enough money to be able to put me through it. They so mm-hmm. they told me that was my job. Frankly, I didn't have a choice of, of, to go into college. My parents forced me, even though I probably could have like been that kid to put up a fuss and say no, but I also wanted to go. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing yet, and I'd still be an yeah. aimless motherfucker without it. I'm not here to say we're not here to say college is useless. It's not. It just it's getting more useless as time goes on, and mm-hmm. it's low key becoming a scam with how much it is. And the fucked up thing, the most that thing that pisses me off the most mm-hmm. are the stigmas. By yes. that, Same. by mm-hmm. and large, that you are looked down upon as an individual if you decide from an early age not to go to college and to instead go to a trade school, like to be a plumber or to electrician, be an electrician. car mechanic, all airplane jobs, engine mechanic, all, all jobs, stuff that is essential. <laughs> all jobs that are completely essential, as my uh, good friend Denise said. And um, you're looked down upon for doing that instead of just like spending all your money, even though you're pretty sh- content with just doing something <laughs> like that with Dude. your life. Dude, you're, you're, you're literally <laughs> considered dumber. You're considered a more stupid individual for going to a trade school and getting a steady career going, if that's what you want, as opposed to wasting years at a college university that you don't even want to go to and getting hundreds of thousands of dollars potentially you're- in debt. You are considered the dumber person <laughs> for choosing a stable career over that. Dude. Like, how fucked is, up is that? It's I mean, ridiculous how, like... You're seen as basically retarded and a societal pariah if you don't spend a, per- a Porsche Carrera's amount of money. Yeah, and it's a money on thing fucking like school. Else. We'll talk about these fucking <laughs> Ivy League universities again with like these fucking oh pieces of shit God. parents that paid literally a million dollars to get their daughter, who was not a soccer player, into like the star soccer program at Yale. 
It's money. And all these people, like, paid for it. The same thing with the rowing program and stuff. There was another scandal with that. I mean, all these people, I think, were fired. There was a whole series of scandals that came out about that. Like, yeah. college tuition scandals and all that. Like, yeah. there was a whole And these are the there. Ivy League schools. These are the great schools. Yeah. These are the ones that guarantee you a great life. Most of the money there goes to their research, not their fucking, like, teaching. It's, like, the last thing on their fucking priority list. Yeah, down, like, the pecking order of things that they're going to go through, like, where they're going to dole out the money, like, college. after they get it, is not... Like, <laughs> I mean, it's just completely corrupted by politics and capitalism. It just, yeah. it's completely corrupted to the fucking core. I, and it's just, why do you think less people are trying to go to it now? Like Dennis, like the whole thing that sparked this whole conversation mm -hmm. that is a whole podcast long at this point yeah. was <laughs> that article you sent me that neither of us could read because we don't want to pay the wall street journal and yeah. that less and less men, specifically men, apparently are not going. I'd even say, though, like, I'd, I'd argue against that article and saying it's not just men. Like, I, I mean, yeah, maybe not so much women, but I almost feel as if it is a general thing that's going on nowadays that a lot of people are realizing that fuck going to college because for fucking what? Literally. Like, I mean, I realized it kind of late, but like if I already like if I even told my girlfriend, like when we have kids, and like I, I told her, like, if we have a son or daughter, whatever, like Lori Laughlin, like, that was the name of that woman from Full House. Was that really her? Yeah. Well, fuck her. Anyway, yeah, the actress on. from Full House. That was the one who like bribed the schools to like get them in. Like, so I'm them. Lori Laughlin from F Full House. Make no. my daughter get into college. I'll these also are the give rich, you a lot of money. These are the rich people we have to look up to. They literally fuck cheated that. to get fuck in there. That. They changed their kids' fuck SAT that. scores. They're fucking cheaters fuck and they're them. liars. These are the people we have fuck to look them. up for. These are probably the same people who said that... Like, these are probably the same people who, if they look up to individuals like this, probably the same people who look up to Donald Trump for earning his fortune. Mm. Probably the same people. As if he didn't, you know, was born to a rich family and get the small loan of a million dollars and shit. Never worked a fucking mm. day for anything in his fat fucking life. It's like... Ugh. Wait, wait, going back to my point, though. I'm sorry, like, I, I'm sorry. I no, no, it's alright. No, I, we both a little heated with this topic because, like, you know, it's something that I think, like, uh, it does affect us. and Or it has affected us, if anything. But, um, uh, I was telling you, I'm a girlfriend, like, you know, if we have, if and when we have kids, like, I'm gonna tell them straight up, like, when they get to that age, when it's about time to, like, kind of think about going to college or whatever the fuck, I'm gonna tell them just straight up, like, like, I have plenty of people in my life that never finished college and they were fine. Or at the very least, like, one of them went to college for, like, two years and then was done and then was, like, perfectly fine afterwards. Like, he got a job. Like, you know, your, your uncle, whatever. In this hypothetical scenario. My dad went to NYU. You <laughs> still remember that he told me this. Maybe I should have done this and would have maybe panned out, I don't know, through some weird twist of fate. He went to NYU. And this was before NYU was ridiculously fucking expensive. Like, it's so, it's insane how much, like, the tuition is over there now. Um, just because, like, yeah, it's for the New York experience. Whatever. But, um, he went to NYU literally for two weeks. Uh, for, I believe he was going in for economics. Dropped out right after those two weeks. <laughs> mm. And my dad went on to basically making his own business afterwards. And I'm not saying, like, thing, oh, like, an entrepreneurial type mm -mm. of pursuit mm -mm. is, like, the main thing to mm -mm. go to. But he did my the dad American dream wrong. Yeah. He did it wrong. Like, sorry. he did it wrong. He didn't finish college. He he should have done that after college. Whatever. Yeah, sorry. And, like, and my dad, like, definitely, like, um, I'm very proud to be my dad's son because, like, you know, he's proven a lot of things, like, uh, wrong to me about a lot of stuff. And one of them being is that, like, a college education really doesn't guarantee you... Like, it doesn't guarantee you shit. And at the very least, like, not having one is, like... At the very least, like, as long as you're not just, like, not doing anything... Like, you're gonna be fine. Like, it doesn't fucking make or break your life if you don't have a fucking degree. And to be fair, I know plenty of people who basically, like, I wish mean, either they dropped out earlier, earlier and found a trade, or that, like, they have some spite against their parents, and plus even their teachers for, like, basically manipulating them into a way of, like, thinking, oh, uh, you're a failure if you don't go to college. Like, like, you're fucking retarded if you don't go to college. Like, all these, like, terrible things to tell someone, like, especially at a... Like, even though you're um like uh, I seventeen and eighteen, self worth is yeah, completely is dictated defined. by a fucking piece of paper that is worth the amount of a new Porsche Carrera. 
Just imagine more, that. <laughs> more, more than the Porsche. More than probably. The Porsche yeah, no, yeah. Oh yeah, obviously. Yeah. True. Yeah. My degree true, is basically true. useless. I don't have a job, and I mean, I work. I work esports. You know, I did that, but I didn't. Communications. Get that. I didn't get that because of my degree. I mm. went to Smash Locals. I talked on the mic, and people were like, "Hey, you talking to the mic good?" And then I got <laughs> I got a reputation for it. That's what happened. That had nothing to do with my degree, and. I was ha I was happy with college for the social aspect, which again, I do I feel so hard for people who couldn't go to school because of the pandemic, and we're literally still paying full fucking tuition for that shit. That that shit gets my fucking that shit gets me so heated. I really wish more mm -hmm. people took a took a gap year or something like that. But like, I feel like I'm one of those people who originally did it just because yeah, it looks good on the job application, and it does. But apparently, in a lot of cases, that's not even good enough because as like the tuition yeah. gets higher and it gets harder and harder to get a degree, it should essentially make it so like, oh, you would really need this degree like for to get a really, really super duper high level job. <sighs> but oftentimes, that's not enough. Like you mentioned a little while ago, a they look for the experience now, and in a lot of the cases, these experiences are ridiculous because some of them are asking them mm. for. Some of them are asking for more years of experience in a program longer than it's even fucking existed. And <laughs> other ones, there are job types that are internship that require, like, you know, three years of videography or whatever like this. And internships are barely even three months sometimes. Yeah. What, like, is, it, what is this one right here for this data analyst job? Note, this is a reverse financed internship. Like, as in, you fund it. So you will pay $15 an hour to work here. That's what, that's legitimately what that job report says. You can't make this up. I, I wish I had the I, fucking, like, creative dexterity <laughs> in my fucking noodle to make that up. But I don't. Pro preferred qual- This one's my favorite. Preferred qualifications. Master's degree. Minimum <laughs> salary, 1529. 1529 an hour. David. I'm reading this one right now. Um, it's number 16, and it's let me, let full me job let me, description. Let me go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to yeah, read it. Yeah, go. <laughs> Okay, I'm there, I'm there, I'm there. there is no way this is serious. Look, <laughs> volunteers are not paid, not because they are worthless, <laughs> but because they are priceless. Yo, you cannot make this oh, up without dying of laughing. Oh, Dennis, they called oh. me priceless. Oh, I want to work for them. Yo, this can't be real. I want to work for them. Like, and look, guys, again, we're not saying that the whole market is like this. And if you are, let's say, a recruiter who is watching this, I'm hoping you don't make meme-ass meme 4chan-looking fucking job descriptions like these that we rolled off. I'd imagine that perhaps, like, it, like you know, the experience requirement is, like, a lot of times, at least for the stuff that I've been kind of trying to, like, um, get a job for. It's like, um, experience is mostly on the pr more preferred side of things. Like, you know... It, if you kind of at least are like, you know, boss makes um, a dollar, I make a dime. That's why I poop on company time. <laughs> the, uh, if you are like one of those like people who are like at least reasonably putting on like experience, <laughs> fuck you, Dave. <laughs> you know, you like, you, I wouldn't, this is not towards you, but like, again, at the same time, like, I, I'll even say, like, I bet you for a lot of these recruiters that college degrees are a fucking afterthought compared to like general experience i truly feel that i really do and the reason being is because again making getting a bachelor's degree is not special anymore it's stopped being special and i'm not saying like oh like all of you guys just flooded the college market or whatever but like it's not special anymore it's just how it is nowadays bachelor's degrees are about as common as i don't know like Someone wearing New Balance, I, I, that, that was a terrible fucking, uh, you know, metaphor. But, like, you know, it's so common nowadays. People literally, there's so many people graduating with so many different degrees from colleges. Colleges, I think, nowadays have had have so many people, than, more people than they've ever had in their entire days of existing in this earth. As an organization and as a business. Like, there's so many people in college nowadays. It's, like... They've also just gotten so fucking huge too. Like mm. campuses are like are literally the size of three, four shopping malls nowadays. <laughs> Maybe that's a little bit too out there, but like, you know, if you ever been to a college campus, they're fucking huge, literally. And I mean, I'm not saying that like you, you know, we like all, you know, that stuff doesn't have its own upkeep. I know it does, but at the same time though, it's like 
it's it's still like as David said, like it's almost fucking criminally like ridiculous that colleges now are just so fucking expensive and they know for this this is also another thing they know they could get away with this too because they i almost feel like that like maybe the day is coming but like before then like there hasn't been like a major culture shift in this country where like people are starting to say yeah fuck college people are still saying oh you got to go to college the media is saying it movies are saying it tv shows are saying it so many fucking people are saying and just almost it's like I remember taking that one advertisement. Actually, no, it wasn't an advertisement class, but I remember seeing like a little course on it, and like they basically brought up a picture of um, Times Square, and you know how like all these ads and shit are just bombarding you with like basically like you know saying like hey you should buy this you should buy this you should buy this you should buy this. That's the same with like how kids are growing up nowadays. Like they're seeing it everywhere, and it's almost like they don't even realize it too until for a lot of them it's almost too late. Like can you agree with me on that? Like, that essentially people are brought up into thinking, like, manipulated almost by everyone and everything that, hey, you don't go to college. Well, you're a fucking idiot. You should probably die. (laughs) Yeah, educationally speaking, a lot of stuff that you learn from college is wasted if you're not interested. I took a ton of classes that I didn't like. Everyone does, because, like, you can't just hyper-focus on the one thing. Like, as part of a degree, like, they try to cover, like, a little bit of all different bases of everything. And lots, some of it's important, you know, some of it's not. I feel yeah. not all of us is going to stick with you. But the whole reason that college is considered as important as it is, is not and par of making us intellectuals like i mentioned before it's because mm-hmm. of the credential things like the credits for it because yeah. logically so speaking yeah logically that there it is because logically speaking college is worth it quote unquote even if it's just to look good on a job lap, uh, job application because nowadays people who don't go to college are seen as below average this is why it feels so fucked up in our guts, Dennis. It's because mm-hmm. the reason for college should be to just better yourself, to make yourself a more intelligent person or to discover what you love. But nowadays, that's not what it's considered anymore from everyone. Like you said, the media and everything else, because it's considered a logically speaking thing that you need to do because it's seen as below average. We're not doing it to better ourselves. We are doing it because of the stigmas. Yeah. And that's fucked up. Yeah. Because we don't want to be basically being, you know, pointed fingers at and basically said, ah, look at this fucking idiot. He didn't go to college and stuff. I got plenty of people within my family that didn't go to college or at the very least, like they, you know, basically went to, uh... Bergen for like two years and then after that like they just didn't go to another four year uh, school. That's what and I did. Fu- Save and they're me doing a fucking fu- fuck ton of money and for no reason. And they're literally doing fine. I'm doing fine. Literally. And that's the thing though too. I have and more that in the bank thing. than most people my age. <laughs> I'll say that. And that's why I'm also saying like this is one like that's a side of the story that almost never in the world would the media ever fucking talk about. Because at the very least, if they do, well, then the colleges are going to lose money. And I know this sounds almost conspiratorial, but I think it goes without saying, though, like... It's to keep poor people down. Yeah. And also, if you look back on it, like, you've... like I'm not going to try to put on a tinfoil hat right now. But, like, it's... When you grew up, school was seen as something you, you had to go to. And especially by the older you got, college was seen as something that you had to go to. Maybe that has changed a bit nowadays because, like, you know, there's, like, um, a lot of these new wave stars, like, coming in. Like, a lot of them, like, you know, the f- most actors are not college educated. And a lot of, for a lot of these guys that are new bloods going into the industry, I'd imagine they probably would have the same fucking opinion as I do. Because a lot of them didn't go to college either. At the very least, like, they went to an acting school, I guess, which is a bit different. But, like, you know, uh, it's... The opinion, like, uh, for at least people my generation, and I almost feel as if the generation after ours, like Gen Z and all them, like, they, I think, you know, they start are starting to realize that there are other avenues, uh, I guess not really, maybe towards success, It's that's a whole different thing, but, like, towards, like, you know, if, let's say, you want to be making money, and you want, like, a job, or um, you want something that will at least pay the bills... There are other avenues for that. And there are going to be at least, I hope to God, they, like, will... Because, like, TikTok also, like, as much of a shitty fucking platform it is for the most part, and the fact that it's also ran by dirty-ass CP, uh, CCP-ass motherfuckers uh, over there in China, 
the people on that platform, at least from the people that I see, um, because my sister uses it a lot, like a lot of them are always talking about like, you know, oh, like, like there's these jobs you can do. Like there's other shit you can do. Like there's like, you know, none of them. I'm pretty sure most of the people on TikTok are not even fucking like finished high school. And they're all talking about like, you know, basically other avenues of like money you can do that isn't fucking predicated on whether or not you have a college degree. And I think at least for them, they'll be better off than we were with that shit because this is maybe one of the few times that I'll ever say that maybe digesting TikTok is going to be probably good for maybe the current, like the you know next coming generation. But they will be a lot more aware that there are other fucking jobs that you can get or other avenues that like you can go through in life to get money that isn't fucking dictated on whether or not you have a piece of paper that is essentially just a big expensive rolling paper at this point for me. I don't know where my fuck deg- where the fuck my degree is at this point, but I really want to make a gigantic joint out of it one day and just fucking smoke it because <laughs> that's all it's worth to me right now at the very least. Maybe also I won't because at the very least... I remember uh, when I was going through college, my parents were the ones that were paying it for me and I had no reason to fuck around. So like at the very least, like for that reason alone, maybe it won't be touched. That's the reason but, that guys <laughs> like us, you know, we're even yeah. able to go to college. That's the thing. Yeah. You know, I feel like we got lucky you and I, that we had parents like that. Oh yeah. Cause, no, I'm cause a- there are so many people who just literally have like their parents just don't have the cash to fucking go and send their kids to college. I am and, a like, blessed. I think nothing less of them either. I'm a blessed and privileged individual. I will say that I'm not, yeah. I'm not, that's not a bad thing to say that I am. And it's frankly, it'd be worse if I didn't acknowledge that I am. I mean, don't get me wrong. I worked my ass off in college. I earned that fucking degree. I did yeah, the you, actual, and, you and I both all the did. studying we shit hustled. by myself. We, yeah. And, and I was not a good student growing up for the most part when I was very young. Oh yeah. But here's the thing. It's like, I hate to say it, but with the way they are, at least in America right now, it's like college degrees and... Uh, I'm also reading a bunch of, like, different comments, various uh, various on the internet mm-hmm. right now of other people's experiences and stuff, but college degrees in one way, man, they're kind of not investments. Like, if you end up with they're a not worthy student investments. debt, it's a bad investment. I yeah. hate to say it, but, like, the, the short answer is, is that if you can't afford to go to college, then you can't go. That, Find I, something I, else. I hate to say it. Like, yeah. you get, like, a four-year college degree, 150 k in student uh, loans or whatever, right? And then mm-hmm. you, like... That will only pay you like something like 50k, whatever for a year. That's that's horrible because then you're going to be working forever just to pay off yeah. your student debt, and you'll never be whole again. Sticking you back in that old time in your life, it defeats the purpose of the, student loans. Literally defeat the entire purpose of college by not advancing you to the next portion of your life. It holds you to it because of that student debt. Holds you back of how for another expensive it is. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that you're probably not even going to be able to get a job with whatever the degree is because it's slightly not the right degree, or the job doesn't exist because they get filled for other reasons, because of who you know or whatever, not because of this fucking piece of paper that you paid money to do it. Like we mentioned earlier as well, it also doesn't guarantee you a job. The whole notion is that, like, mm-hmm. the whole thing that was preached to us, it's like the fucking dare program that was brainwashed yeah. to us. It's going to guarantee oh, you a job. God, yeah. No, it fucking doesn't. Literally, people would tell me, like, oh, I have a degree in communication and media arts, so why don't you work in the media or whatever? You you want me to walk up to NBC and show them my degree? (laughs) You you want me to, like, take it off the wall in my room or whatever? There, you see? You, like, go on the window, just point to your fucking resume like a a fucking lunatic and just like, hey, see? Look, degree! Job, please! Tears tears running down my face, sweat all over. (laughs) Like, please! Like... Let me in. Let me in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. Like, uh, you're yeah. you're naive as fuck if you think that. And that's why, you know, you're seeing these, like, new type of breed educational options where, like, oh, I want to be a software developer. Okay. Mm-hmm. You can attend an online school for that for six months. And then get a job at, like, fucking but, however much, like, six 70k months, per a year. A fucking fraction of a fucking school year within college. And, I mean, granted, you know, sometimes the programs can be a little pricey. And that goes without, it goes without saying for a lot of But still! <laughs> but, but still, like, you know, software engineers, there's some bullshit out that they have to navigate to. Like, every fucking field has it. But, like, if you could land yourself a good job, hey, yo, like, you, you chilling. You big chilling after that. Like, literally. You, like... Like, bro, like... It's like investing in your own riches, man. Like, it's only recently, too, that a lot of schools... I'm talking, like, public schools, like, uh... K-12, through like, shit like that. It's only recently that they started to kind of, like, 
advocate more tech sort of kind of oriented sort of uh, classes and have more kids get interested in tech. Tech has been like a big thing since fucking 2005. <laughs> hmm. Computers were just as important as they are today. Back in 2005. I don't know why I'm saying 2005 in general. I'm just going to that year. Uh, and, um, inherently. But like their importance hasn't changed. The learning of a computer has the importance of it has not changed. Like I feel as if nowadays like you you should know how to fucking type up a word document. <laughs> like you should at least know how to at least make a bare bones type of Excel spreadsheet. If you're going into like let's say the sort of common job field where like you're going to be working at a company, everyone should fucking know that. But it's like only recently nowadays that like I'm starting to see Especially my old school, like, kind of advocate more for that. And I didn't see it a lot growing up back in the day. When even I kind of already knew that, like, not that computers are going to, like, take over the world and shit. But, like, that they're going to become more important. Uh, They are very important. And people should be looking towards that, let's say, not that, not as the sole avenue, but, like, you know, if it is maybe something you're kind of remotely interested in or something like thing, yeah, yeah, like go into that. But like, you know, what, what's the traditional jobs that a lot of you know parents, I guess, here in this country, like kind of advocate? Uh, like stereotypically, doctors, lawyers, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> like I don't know, like the back to society. The people we needed to fight a fucking global pandemic are the ones who are struggling to live the most because of all, like, this stuff that they have to pay out of pocket to do so. Especially nurses. Yeah, let's talk about this. Let's talk about, however, in, like, Europe or whatever, like, how tuition is free because it is paid for by the taxpayers. And why? Mm, Because the government, they're taking taking my (laughs) money, my job. No. It's because maybe, just maybe, we should take the actual wealth that we have and invest it in the country because a population that's better educated is good for the country because mm. then that actually lets them give back and get those jobs to help stimulate this economy instead of literally just making these people richer. Again, capitalism. All the reason that college is the scam that it is and why it's so expensive is because it's making wealthy people wealthier. Why are college textbooks so expensive even though they're not worth that much? Oh, because their teachers need to afford Audis and fancy cars and stuff and their, their actual bosses don't want to do that for them because they don't want to pay them that much. Like how they're, again, like how they're paid in Europe or whatever or any of these other places. It's not about... Uh, it, the, the way colleges in America just completely, not even just monetarily like we mentioned before, defeats mm-hmm. the fucking purpose of college. Because it, like, it just completely stunts you. I still think it depends on who you are. Like, I won't say college was a complete waste of my time. Yeah. It helped me discover like, who guys, I was. It was uh, good all socially this, or whatever. All the stuff that I was saying, too, is not I think for like some sweeping, people, it really uh, is. I think for some people, it really is a fucking waste of time. And to answer your long-winded question that we've had pretty much since the beginning of this podcast, I think it is a college degree is becoming more useless for more and more people. It depends. I... I, I no, no, yeah, like, again, going off of David, and I, I know uh, I was trying to, <laughs> sorry, Dave, I was trying well, to, like, well, just get my get. point across, but, um, yeah, there's, this is was, such a loaded topic that I'm yeah, yeah, it is, time, it is, like, it is, it is, like, and it's something that kind of affects us both, because, like, we were both in that fucking institution, and, um, oh, we were paying for it, if anything, <laughs> but, like, um, uh, like, all the stuff that we've been saying for the last fucking hour and 13 minutes, um, it's, I'm not saying it as, like, a sweeping fucking generalization, either, I am perfectly aware that there are people who did benefit from college like i mean for me i definitely benefited from like the social aspect and all that and i know for a lot of kids like you know i guess going i I could say kids because i'm 27 all right like kids who are coming out of basically high school now and like basically going into college like they're not really for the most part i guarantee you this most kids that are going into college are not going in for dreams and aspirations they're going in there to party (laughs) I'm, i'm being dead fucking serious because well, their right parents now. are making them like mine did yeah so that's but that's the thing though i'd even say like I, we're gonna wrap this up a bit but like i'd almost feel as if like kids going into college like let's say um because their parents told them to almost go and party as hard as they do because of the fact that it's almost like a rebellion because like most kids nowadays don't really have a rebuttal uh because they're not educated enough like at that point like they, they're not they don't have any rebuttal to like you know 
to their parents a uh, question of like, why don't you want to go to college if they don't want to go to college? Because we're not taught that. Period. Generally speaking, like thing when if you're like just kind of like digesting a lot of like media and shit like that, like you know, you're not really gonna be. No, no, none of those things are gonna be telling you like, hey, like college is stupid. No, you're gonna be literally. You will probably like since like ads are so like algorithmic to ties to our like whatever the fuck we do nowadays on this website like, i've got an ad for riverside because i have the tab open over here so yeah that that's... so like you know the further then the further the years go on like these kids are gonna get start to get ads for like hey come to so and so fuck me in the ass college and because we're gonna fuck you in the ass financially <laughs> you will get a degree but hey we're ain't gonna guarantee jack shit either so you know Pay us 200000 fucking dollars out of your goddamn pockets. And you're going to be having that debt over your head for the rest of your fucking life. How about it? You want to go to college? <laughs> Almost as if like, you know, come on. You know, we all know what the answer is. Wink. Yes, obviously. You know, of course. Come on. Come. Come to college. You know, the financial aid is going to do fuck all for you anyways. Because like, you know, it's really not going to like pay for everything. I mean, I, I will admit like FAFSA did um, definitely save my bacon a lot of times. But, again, if you are one of those people, and there's a lot of them, I think the vast majority, really, the people, like, love to just go out of state. People want it, like, kids love to fucking get out of the wherever the fuck they lived in for so many years, and they want to go to different states. They, they want to, like, have life experiences, and I don't blame them for it, but at the same time, though, it's like, like... Like, kids, even when they're 17 or 18, they're just as rebellious as they were, like, fucking at 15 or 16. Like, it, like that whole thing, for me, it definitely, like, kind of mellowed out. Not that I was, like, the most rebellious type or anything, but it's, like, that, that, that shit definitely mellowed out. Like, for me, like, while I was in college, because, like, I started to realize that, like, how much kind of was at stake while I was over there. Because my parents were paying for me. Like, like... I, I'm not gonna be an asshole and like fucking have all their money go down the tubes and shit like that. No, hell no. And and again, if like if you do party hard in college, like I'm not taking nothing away from you and shit. But it's just like, or if you did, and that's what you did, like back then. But it's um like it's no wonder that like thing. Uh, that's almost a trap in and of itself, isn't it? Because like. I almost feel as if a lot of colleges practically already know that a lot of kids that grew up, let's say, in their little hinky-dinky fuck-ass towns, and they want to get out there and explore the world. That's why also, like, the out-of-state tuition is obviously, ast- sometimes even astronomically more expensive than just in-state uh, applicants. You know what I mean? Like, it's almost like they weaved it in a way where it's like, hey, you want to have that, like, let's say, fun California college type experience? Well, you're gonna be paying out of your fucking ass if you want it, if you want to have it. And I'd even argue a lot of people who um, have the have had those experiences and had, had and still have that debt over their dangling over their heads. Probably, I'd imagine half and half don't really regret it. But at the same time, though, it's like they also still realize I have two hundred k thousand, let's say whatever uh, dollars in debt because I went to that school <laughs> and. It's a trap either way, really. Like, it, they just, like, I want, it's, again, I know it sounds real conspiratorial, but, like, I, I really do feel like all these colleges and these presidents of these colleges probably all got together and just probably thought of systems where, like, they could maximize and squeeze whatever fucking money they can get out of everybody. Because here's the thing, and most people don't even talk about this because college presidents are about as kind of, like, not really in the public eye as anybody, really. But, like, these people who are the presidents of your colleges... They are fucking loaded. It's not even a fucking debate. Like, they are loaded. They get kickbacks and they get all this type of shit. Like, they get all this sort of, like, royalties and everything. Like, nobody runs uh, ads better than colleges because of the fact that, like, they are not the ones that are basically... Colleges don't put on billboards that... Well, I mean, some do, at least in Jersey. But, uh, like, they... Their form of advertisement is through public schools. Because when junior year comes around, what gets thrown at you? A bunch of college brochures. Well, look at them. <laughs> and Montclair take State, your pick. Montclair State University is literally one of the biggest commuter schools in the state of New Jersey. 
and it never closed down. No matter oh. how bad the weather was. No matter if it was like a fucking hurricane outside. The president or, is a cunt. Or, I hate yeah, her. Yeah, she is. She is actually. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna censor that. Go you just you just go right ahead. And yeah Fucking the, cunt yeah, there um <laughs> Yeah, there there was this horrible, horrible snowstorm that I remember this a couple years ago that stranded people at the university as well as other places. My friend was in his car for twelve hours trying to get home. Twelve hours it took him to get home while they were stuck on those mm. highways having it go through. Pretty sure people died. It's a horrible thing. Oh, yeah. And the president of uh, Montclair State at the time, uh, Susan Cole. Um, Is she still not? No, no. She, she's not the president anymore. She, uh, she oh, well, fuck I, think, I think she retired this year or last year, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she um, let her staff go home early, and she went home early. Didn't close the university down until the last second until it was too late. And it wasn't the only time she ever did that either. And you want to know the reason that was? Because she lived down the hill from the school. Yeah. Dead fucking serious. It's because she didn't have to travel anywhere else. Literally rich people are the stupidest motherfuckers. Or like the eight most asshole Heartless. Like, Heartless. I, I, if it wasn't obviously against like my contract or whatever, like with my employer, I would honestly have some things to say about like how some ways of mm -hmm. the American dream is managed. I would. Because they mm. make some fucking... Dumbass fucking decisions, which yeah. I think is why they had to sell it, actually, because the place wasn't doing that well financially. Mm -hmm. uh, again, because rich people are really fucking stupid. It's like almost the more money you have with it, the dumber you are with it. I swear Everything to God. is a gamble by the time you get a lot of, like, by the time you get, like, stupid amounts of fucking money, almost everything you do at that point yeah. is practically a gamble. Like this Especially any South sort of Park adventure. episode I watched today. Where, like, all those people were protesting about, like, the five Romanian twins. Like, that classic South Park episode. And the whole, like, they, like the mm. episode even points out, it's just like, oh, why are they protesting? Why do they care so much? It's because, well, you see, from the wealthier the country you are from, sometimes the more bored you get. And you start protesting shit that has absolutely nothing to do with you. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, like, and it's like, yeah, that's kind of facts, I guess. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know, man. Like but I said, white girls took over the George Floyd protests. They had no reason. I, I mean, to be fair, if it was to, like, protest... Like, or, this like, solidarity. You know, yeah, like, like, you know, for the fact the that an innocent American man... Community. Yeah, that an innocent man... Well, not, I, don't, I don't know about innocent, I don't know, whatever. But, like, you know, basically how he was treated by the police, like, was very cruel. I think that goes without saying and shit. But it's like, you know... What the fuck you doing there? <laughs> I, I mean, David, we talked about this before, but it's like, literally, like, you know, we're gonna wrap it up here. What the fuck? Like, you know, I'm an Asian dude. Like... Of course, like, I do feel, like, very terrible that that happened. But it's like, you know, you're a white girl. <laughs> like, who, has, who lives in a shitty suburban it's like a neighborhood? It's like Why a, the fuck are you there? It's a solidarity thing, man. It I mean, would be we... so much better if you're not there, is what I'm saying. Though. I don't know about that, man. I mean, come on. Having a diverse crowd out there instead, like, showing how they're, like, at least having, like, solidarity. No, I the... understand that. But there were so many people that... If they're victimizing hijack... themselves, no, 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 no. then, no, yeah, no, fuck no. you. You're stupid, the ones but... Who who were hijacking it were these like cunty influencer types. Oh yeah, duh. I like I remember like and the beginning they, of the they, pandemic. Dude, like, it was it was widespread. Like it was ridiculous how oh, much yeah. how many of these stupid bitches were In, basically. Influencers going are up. top five worst human beings yeah. in the in like the world. they had you know, like the signs that everyone had, like, you know, we stand for George Floyd, like, you know, it's like a lot of solid solidarity stuff, right? Take a picture of that for I, the gram. There was literally a a fucking a guy was recording like uh this one cunt like who had like the sign up and the guy was taking a picture. And then after, the, as soon as the picture was finished uh, being took, she just dropped the sign and just walked away. <laughs> I went to. Like, this, this is this is why, like, I I thought like you know I felt so bad because like there were so many like um, bad apples that came out during like that whole protest. Like I'm not gonna go into that either, but it's just like, you know, uh, what? How the fuck did I get to George Floyd from fucking college? Anyways, what about, I'm saying. I was about is, to say that's a, yeah, we're getting kind yeah, of off topic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, basically, guys, to wrap it up uh, before I go off even more off the rails, um, essentially, look, college. I know we talked about this before and stuff, but I just wanted to kind of go into it a little bit more just because of at least something that um, the YouTuber Lewis Rossman that I was watching kind of said. Look, college really, really doesn't guarantee donkey dick in your life nowadays. It is not an equalizer. I, I mean, it could be depending. I, I know. It, I'm not, again, like it, it. it's a very slippery slope to kind of just kind of talk about. But my whole thing is, is that Look, 
there are other avenues out there in life. And no matter what the fuck your parents say, they may be good people, but they may be shitty just in this instance if they're telling you like, oh yeah, college is like your only avenue to go through. Uh, fuck your teachers. Um, what Their opinions don't fucking matter. Because you, look, I would even always emphasize this. It's your life. In the end, it's your fucking life. You are going to be paying that debt. Not your parents. If you got parents that are going to be paying for it, then we're good for you. But if you're one, if you're not one of those people, that I took advantage not of that. Yeah, like that. Your parents are not exactly financially, you know, up there uh, compared to like let's say other families. If you are one of those people, don't fucking tell them that. Don't don't let them tell you basically that. Oh yeah, college is the only fucking avenue of life that you can go through that will basically guarantee you anything. It doesn't guarantee you anything. Nine times out of ten, it doesn't guarantee you anything. It guarantees you even less than it ever did. Way back when. Unless people are doing it because it guarantees debt, depending on if you don't have a, if you're not rich enough to pay for it, or your parents aren't. Look, that two hundred thousand k debt that a lot of people have nowadays. Wouldn't you rather be buying a Porsche Carrera with that fucking money than a f- <laughs> like having a degree that, let's say, it just but doesn't Dennis, do anything for you? But Dennis, mm. what are they gonna do with that Porsche Carrera if they don't know how to drive? <laughs> Because they didn't get educated. Point being, literally, guys, like... Uh, I it, like what like, this guy said. Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and just my final closing thought, I guess, is that literally, again, like, college, again, it's very dependent. I, I will agree with that. It, it is very dependent, as David even said, like, depending on what you do. If you're going in for financing, it's like, you're practically, like, you're probably fine, like, a shitty desk job like thing for a while and then you'll go, you'll move up but like it's um it really in the end guarantees less than it did back then is i guess what i'm gonna just end it on and that if you choose not to go to college there is nothing wrong with that and i'm gonna be telling my kids the same way like at least this is what i told myself like i'm a be telling them like you know i'm not gonna give them the whole like oh college you gotta go to college fucking thing like you know like i realized it by their like at least a little bit after their age let's say hypothetically that you know it's kind of bullshit <laughs> like it really is it, and it's all a fucking i hate even go on to say that it's a fucking ponzi scheme now at this point like Here, the way it's being driven i like what this guy said uh thomas b walsh uh, they're talking about is uh, all these people answering is college university really just a scam? I really like what this guy said. He said mm-hmm. college is not a scam. However, college is no longer an investment. The oh. four-year college degree has now become I agree speculation. With he says that fueled by a society obsessed with the idea of the four-year college degree with almost no regard for costs or outcomes, the mm-hmm. availability of virtually unlimited student loans and the financial illiteracy of the mm-hmm. parents and students ensure that students will continue to rush to four-year colleges like Lemmings. This guy says in many ways it's hard to blame them for, you know, not planning for it in the way that they do because in the good old days, 50 years ago, college was the traditional path to financial success, which it was, which is why our the mm-hmm. whole shitty fucking boomer generation mm-hmm. told us to do it. it. Can we just talk real quick about how insane it is that the greatest generation birthed the fucking worst one that's ever existed? Can we talk about that? I mean, we don't have to talk about that, but I just wanted to mention that. Like, rhetorically? How, at yeah, least. like literally rhetorically. <laughs> like, how did the greatest generation birth the boomers? And I know they're all having kids because they thought the world was ending, so more people had kids than they thought they would have, but whatever. If you graduated with any kind of degree with any GPA, you could waltz out of the college gate straight into a well-paying entry-level corporate job. That is how it worked back then when society, I think, was whiter, and I think that I think that's one thing that has to do with it. This paradigm has collapsed. College in America doesn't work that way anymore, but a lot of people aren't interested in that facts. They are just all except with, like, the college mania thing, you know? It's yeah. Like, it's like, you yeah. know, it's still considered a necessity when... It doesn't guarantee you a job anymore because of how, you know, because not only because of the market, how the market's changed, but and how the population's changed and also like because of how expensive it is. The fact is, is that, you know, college isn't regulated by governments or anything. So it's not made in a way where like the average American can take a their their own like little shot at it. You know what I mean? Even if sometimes if it's a community college, depending on where you are, though, I think that's getting better because of the stigmas. You got to remember. 
Twitter doesn't give a shit about, like, all, like, the, uh, horrible things that that website causes, the mass ignorance. They just want to keep you scrolling, because the more people scrolling helps them make money. You gotta remember, some of these things that are seen as necessities are businesses. They're Most businesses. of them are businesses. College is a business. These people are running a business like anything else. I went And the to, president is the CEO. I went to yeah. Montclair State University, the one of the top communication media arts schools in the country, for CMDA. I'm proud of my degree. I worked my ass off for it, don't get me wrong. But I also went to school, and I've mentioned this on the podcast before, during the Trump administration. They didn't shut the fuck up about him. And the reason they didn't shut the fuck up about him is because they wanted so bad. They wanted so, 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 so bad for the whatever journalist was going to take down Trump. Like that, <laughs> like, that, like, that, like that British dude who fucking annihilated Nixon in that interview. The, uh, the, uh, the talk show host who interviewed him. I forgot what his name was. But he's the guy who really wound up like really completely destroying Nixon's reputation because he basically got him to admit live on the air that things aren't illegal. That illegal things aren't illegal if the president does it. He literally got Nixon to fucking say that. <laughs> in that it's it's a piece of American history right there. <sighs> but same thing. Because that makes them look cool. So that makes them look good so they can say that the guy who did that was from Montclair. You just gotta remember these people aren't always looking out for you and they're doing it for their own businesses. Fall Most in love of the with time they're not even looking out for you. Fall in <laughs> love with a job. Never fall in love with the company. I said that last week about fucking uh Paulie from Rocky. <laughs> when they just came over and they gave him his pink slip. For no fucking reason. Just because he was too old. No benefits. Mm. No retirement. But nothing. After how many years with the company. I guess he just got a... I don't know if that's a, one of those um, Republican um, personal, <laughs> uh, personal accountability shit that people say. Like, oh, that's on to you. But I agree with this guy. I think college can be a scam depending on what you do it for. Like, if you're majoring in French literature, like what the only job you can get is for a teacher at a university. So if that's your or goal... Then yeah, or, if or that's you your... want to be a novelist, or no, like, I, I guess that's true too. Yeah. But I don't think again, I don't think you need a degree for that. I guess there's the internet for these kinds of things, but I don't. Yeah, David, you want to write a book, you and me? Yeah, we sure. could literally write a book if we wanted to, and probably publish it too. What is our, like, what is our book going to be about? Uh, the absolute state of this country and how it needs more titties. See, I already got David on board. See, that's also the capitalist mindset going in because you yeah, realize that shit will sell. Web, that shit will sell. We don't because have teams. webcams or anything, but I, I, I was nodding my head. <laughs> uh, you know, so he did get me. Uh, this, the, 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 the man, this man knows me. I, I don't know what else to say. He, he knows. He know. He knows me very well. So, so all right, guys, we're gonna wrap. Yeah, it up today. we. I guess and, we can talk about this forever, but uh, I guess but, we'll very. Yeah. Can we very quickly? Can we very yes. quickly do the uh, do this little eulogy for Norm Macdonald? Yes, we can. Who probably would? I don't want to speak for. I don't want to speak on behalf of the dead, but I feel like he would have agreed with everything we said. Not that I. Yeah, yeah. I knew. I knew Norm. Me and him were tight like that. You know, like was I, he? Was he in college? I don't fuck. I don't know. I don't, what college did Norm go to? I, I don't know. He went to the school. I'm of, typing it. He went to the school of the, the SNL. <laughs> he, went, he went to SNL University. <laughs> I, I could even imagine Norm probably didn't even go to college. It, it would make me no surprise, like, at all. Mm. I'm trying to think of what he would say about, like, I'm trying to think of what he would say about college, but I feel like I wasn't... Carleton University, so he did go to college. Okay. Yeah. All right, go ahead. It wasn't nearly did... exciting as the Carleton dance. <laughs> I feel like that, maybe he'd say that. I, I could definitely see him he, saying he, that. He, he probably put this place on the map just for who he was. <laughs> So I'm going to uh, read this little uh, excerpt from uh, Norm Macdonald's book uh, from the last like two and a half pages of it as part of like the final chapter uh, because it kind of serves as a pretty great eulogy to his legacy. So I'm going to open mm -hmm. this up right here, read it, and then I'm going to pour out this beer. I guess this is a good way to end it, so uh, <clears throat> I'll be reading this. There is the way things are and then the way things appear. And it is the way things appear, even when false, that is often the truest. If I am remembered, it will always be by the four years I spent at Saturday Night Live, and maybe even more than that, by the events surrounding my departure from that show. As long as SNL exists, then so do I. When people come to see me do stand-up, it is because somewhere in their memory I live on SNL, dressed as a young Burt Reynolds insisting Alex Trebek refer to me as Turd Ferguson. <laughs> 
and they come to see me and they come to see me and I am old and I'm fat and I don't mention SNL and I do my answering machine joke and they are happily disappointed. After the show, they stand beside me and take pictures the way you would with a donkey at the side of the road. <laughs> Keep reading, keep reading. They, they, they tell me they are big fans, and they don't care what their girlfriends say. <laughs> they understand me, even though they know good and well that nobody else does. I'm dry, they say. The next time I come to their town, they don't show up. <laughs> it can be difficult to define yourself by something that happened so long ago and is gone forever. It's like a fellow at the end of the bar telling no one in particular about the silver medal he won in high school track, the one he still wears around his neck. <laughs> the only thing an old man can tell a young man is that it goes fast, real fast, and if you're not careful, it's too late. Of course, the young man will never understand this truth. But looking back now, I can see that my life since SNL has been a full sprint, trying with all my might to outrun the wolves of irrelevancy snapping at my heels. It has all been in vain, of course. They caught and devoured me years ago, but not completely. Lauren would see to that. My foot would still make a vague imprint. Myself would still cast a faint shadow. And years later, I would write a book. And not only write it, but be in it as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I started my own book. I, I think a lot of people... <laughs> I'm sorry. I think a lot of people oh, feel sorry for you if you were on SNL and then emerged from the show anything less than a superstar. They assume you must be bitter, but it is impossible for me to be bitter. I've been lucky. If I had to sum up my whole life, I guess those are the words I would choose, all right? When I was a boy, I was sure I'd never make it past Moose Creek, Ontario, Canada, but I've been all over this world. Except for Europe, Asia, Australia, Africa, <laughs> and South America. Oh, and Antarctica, but that's really splitting hairs. I mean, how many people have ever been to Antarctica? <laughs> I never expected to be any more than a common laborer. And I would have considered myself lucky to have achieved that. But I was blessed with so much more. I'm a stand-up comedian and have been for over a quarter of a century. I've performed thousands of hours from a small club in on, on, uh, Ottawa, Ontario, uh, Ottawa, Ontario. <laughs> All the way to a small club in Edmonton, Alberta. Sometimes I get big laughs and I think I'm the best stand-up in the whole world. And other times I bomb and I think I'm not even in the top five. Before I was famous, I had a whole bunch of jobs where all I needed was boots. People would look right past me, or if they did look at me, it was with a mean look. But when I got famous, people would look at me and smile and wonder where they knew me from. If they flat out recognized me, they'd laugh and dance like they'd won a prize, and I'd just stand there and smile and feel warmth from their love. So the fame made the world, which was a real cold place, a little less cold. And as for my gambling, it's true, I lost it all a few times. But that's because I always took the long shot and it never came in. But I still have some time before I cross that river. And if you're at the table and you're rolling them bones, then there's no money in playing it safe. You have to take all your chips and put them on double six and watch as every eye goes to you and then to those red dice doing their wild dance and freezing time before finding the, gruel, uh, the cruel green felt. I've been lucky. I will now perform the ceremonial pouring of the expired <laughs> Blue Moon Harvest Pumpkin Wheat beer. <laughs> I've gathered a bucket for such the occasion. Here it is. <laughs> I gotta open this with my hand. It's gonna like explode all over my fucking gaming PC. This is not good. <laughs> Hold on. And if you guys hear uh, David basically short out and basically disappear, you know what happened. <laughs> Uh, I'm just gonna bring my mic. This PC exploded. <laughs> I'm gonna bring my mic real. I'm actually gonna bring my mic real close to this. Tell me if you can hear this. Actually, hold on. I don't think you can. No. Damn. You didn't hear a. You didn't hear a sound of that, did you? Nope. Incredible. Well, I'm going to put this beer bucket on the ground now. <laughs> <laughs> that looks so delicious, even though I'm pretty sure it's spunked, and now my voice is way too loud because I, I uh, my microphone Dude, gain. Your, your stomach would literally have a holocaust <laughs> if you drank that right now. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote one more thing from Norm MacDonald before we go, or 
Actually, no, I'm not going to quote one more. Actually, yeah, I'm, I'm going to quote one more thing before from Norm Macdonald. I wanted to end it on his um, on his little eulogy right here. But when he was on Comedians in Cars talking with coffee, he was talking with Jerry Seinfeld about... Uh, he was talking with Jerry Seinfeld about Bill Cosby. And he was saying whenever, he, whenever people would say, like, what is... I think the worst thing about Bill Cosby is just the sheer hypocrisy of it all. You know, of what he did, what he said. Uh, like... What, what he what he d did compared to all the stuff he would say and what Norm Macdonald said to that is like no nah, I think the worst part of Bill Cosby was uh the, the raping <laughs> he's like I think it's dumb that people think the worst thing is the hypocrisy because it's just like oh yeah what if he was honest like yeah I like I love raping it's, <laughs> it's my favorite thing to do in the world but yeah but you know at least he was honest about it at least he's not a hypocrite a lot of people didn't think like he did, and uh, we, I know people say this a lot when somebody dies, but honest to God, there is never going to be somebody like him. There, there really is not going to be like a, somebody else like Norm Macdonald. He mm -hmm. really was a one-of-a-kind individual, one-of-a-kind comedian, and uh, we are going to miss you. I think the earliest mm -hmm. time I ever heard him was Fairly Odd Parents when he played Norm the Genie. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> One of my favorite characters, actually, from that fucking show. Norm was goaded. Oh, he was funny as fuck. Like, Mr. Crocker. He was. Mr. Crocker would, like, come up and be like, uh, Only three wishes, rats. And I suppose I can't wish for more wishes, can I? And he just goes to Mr. Crocker and he's like, Actually, you can, but we say you can't, even though you can, but we you, uh, we tell you you can't. <laughs> We've been bluffing for centuries. <laughs> Uh, rest in, peace, rest in peace, God rest his soul. Uh, and, uh, Norm Macdonald. We're done, I guess, and, right? Yes, and uh, also fuck the uh, U.S. educational system. We need some good unfucking. But uh, yeah, that guys, that's gonna be our, uh, I guess, show for today. Got a big uh, one-topic episode in a while. Yeah, right. Nah, uh, yeah, like a way of. Uh, yeah, really. It's been a while. It's just another uh, one of those things where, like, I feel like I have so much more to say about it, but we said so much already. You know yeah. what I mean? It's one of those topics where gonna you be... get so heated about it and you're so passionate about it. And even though you have the knowledge about it, I sometimes feel like I had a, I sometimes feel like I didn't do a good job getting the words out. Even though I feel like, you know, I feel like we both articulated ourselves pretty well. Right? Yeah, I, I think we did. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it, I don't know. We, it was definitely going to get to the point though, like where if we, this, if this episode was going to get towards like the Lord of the Rings runtime, uh, it, uh, probably would have started babbling at that point. Yeah, for anything. sure. For sure. I feel. I feel like we yeah. were already getting to that point. Like we didn't. Mm -hmm. One of those things. I mean, we don't consolidate things on this show. We come in. We say our piece. We get mad at shit that doesn't matter, or in this case, things that do matter. And <laughs> we we just go forth and further into the infinite. And even though sometimes I feel like I didn't say enough, even though we probably did, I'm damn proud of it. Speak, I think so. Yep. Speaking of other things, I'm damn proud of. Uh, here's my link to Fiverr. You can check me out here. I, uh, do, uh, voice work of all different kinds. Narration, promo, commercial, character work, YouTube videos even, for cheap. You can hire me on there for $5 for your personal project or even additional services that I provide, like editing some of it to get, editing, editing and syncing the audio files together, adding copyright-free music to your project for additional costs and whatnot. Or if you just want to hire me, help me build my voice work resume up, you can do that for the low, low cost of only $5. That's, seriously, that's as low as it gets on Fiverr. I can't make it cheaper if I tried. Except for the dude who tried to pay me with like 10% of his YouTube ad revenue. Even though I couldn't find his YouTube channel. <laughs> it didn't matter because he found somebody else because he messaged me at like 5 in the morning. But regardless, uh, <laughs> that's the thing with Fiverr, man. Sometimes you get international work and they message you at wonky times. But I'm grateful for it. If you guys want to help uh, get me some work, if you want to hire me for your project, if you like my voice, if you think I sound like anything you need for your project... I would appreciate that, and I would love to show you why voice work is so much more than having a nice voice. So yeah, uh, next up, Dennis, uh, where are the, the follow links? All right, guys, well, you could find us on Instagram. <laughs> I love I just basically, without skipping a beat, it's like, all right, I guess I'm going to be doing it. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> even going to edit it. We're just going to sit there dead silent for like... <laughs> Wait, were you really silent the whole time? <laughs> I mean, I did say something about how I'm about to drink this beer out of this bucket. No, you won't. 
So then you'll die. Oh god, it's actually- Oh god, it looks like diarrhea now. It's like fermented a little bit. Holy shit. Ah. Uh, oh, look at- It smells good, though. It still smells good, but still, it's, no. It's, uh, what, uh, what beer was it again? Oh, this, Blue was, Moon, right? this was Blue Moon Harvest Pumpkin Wheat. Like the pump- Ooh. Like the pumpkin beer, except it's from last year. Oh. Uh, why do you guys have old-ass beer from last year? I don't know, just never dumped it out. <laughs> yeah, but- Alright, well, guys- you can find David on Fiverr, as he said. You can find our uh, podcast on a lot of platforms like Google, Apple, and all the others that you could possibly think of. Uh, Anchor is also one of them, right, yes. David? Yes. Yes, as, as well as Anchor. And uh, Spotify and a, a bunch of others, of course. Uh, anywhere you listen to your podcast, we'll probably be on there. So if you do see us on there, please send some love our way. Also, you know, help with a clout because we out here and we... Me and my boy here are hustling and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, hopefully not drinking outdated, expired ass motherfucking beers. Uh, <laughs> don't don't please. <play. laughs> and of course, uh, no Facebook, but you could find us on Instagram and also on the cesspool that is <laughs> Twitter. Um, and guys, that's gonna be it uh for today's episode i'm um, sorry well if it was a bit more serious uh i guess coming from us today but it just was at least something that i and then i guess by extension david felt as if uh at least mostly for me i had to feel as if i, I felt as if i had to talk about it uh just because we had to talk about the stigmas man we we had to let people yeah. know the real and reason that some of the shit goes down just drop some facts on you you know what i mean yeah and uh, again we don't deal with facts this is all coming from people we're not we ain't no economists either but this is all coming from two guys who literally went through college and we basically, uh, the stuff that we are telling you is shit that we realized after we graduated. And a lot of us basically weren't lucky either because, you know, they, those people also have like a fuck ton of debt that they basically had to sort through. Mm -hmm. So just basically letting you guys know like what's in store for you, if anything. If any of you, young, if any of those uh, young people in this podcast who are gonna be going into college soon or whatever or like your first days coming up like they just uh, just know that if you decide that this isn't for you there's nothing wrong with that yeah, don't be discouraged no matter what yeah. you decide i mean try your hardest uh you know you want to work to get that degree that's great i don't regret getting mine because i was lucky that i had my parents to help me through it and frankly pay mm -hmm. for it but uh if you're blessed to have that great if not i don't know like it's much like my love life I like to think of things as like an open book. You know, thinking of life as an open book is one of the things that helped me get over my breakup uh, mm -hmm. eventually. And I feel like something like this, where the universe or like the world or the media is crashing down on you, telling you this is the only way to be successful, is to remember that anything can happen. And that you can do anything. Mm -hmm. And that life isn't set in stone. And they can't set that in stone for you either. A lot of the most successful mm -hmm. people in the world don't have degrees. Some really not successful people have degrees and feel like there's less in between. But, you know, like what the, my point is, is that when you think of life as an open book, it'll feel less discouraging. That's all I'm telling you. And we don't want anybody to feel discouraged, regardless if you choose to go to college, get go to university, get those degrees, or go to a trade school, get that kind of job, or, or don't go to college at all. So, yeah, uh, I think we're done here. I heard Dennis's mom just call for him. <laughs> and I think we're pretty much just wrapping up here. Uh, tell Den Dennis, tell your mom I said hi. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> she actually told me that like I actually have a decent uh, voice. Uh, she actually heard an episode uh, I was playing before a while back. If my mom like, listened to this fucking podcast. I would. <laughs> <laughs> it's because my mom doesn't exactly have a hundred percent grasp on English that I think she's just like. She just hears my voice and is like, oh, yeah, that's a good voice. <laughs> and that's like the end of it. I think you have a nice voice. Thank you. You're welcome. I want to train it when I have a job because I can't exactly <laughs> hire a vocal coach right now. But <laughs> Well, let me, know uh, one day, one little, day. let me know if you need a little help with that. People ask me about stuff like that. Not that I'm a vocal coach, but, you know, as far as getting started with voice work goes, even though I'm no professional in myself. But whatever, we're battling. Hour 50. Long one today. Thanks for sticking with us, boys and girls. We really appreciate it. And uh, not boys and girl. There are more. There's more than one now. And uh, <laughs> we love you all. Uh, stay uh, stay tuned next week. Uh, we wonder who the next guest is going to be. I know we don't say that at the end of the shows anymore. But David's I feel like it's mom. All right, guys. We're going to be. We should out. have. I've been thinking about this. We should have Gigless mm. on again. Oh, we could do we that. We should do that again. I, I, feel like, I feel like it would be a great time for like a little. A nice little four-way, you know, a nice little four-way episode, you know what I'm saying? 
All right, guys, we're going to head out now. Uh, Y'all have a good night. Bye-bye. We'll see you. Lights off.